This video is for section VRAP-G. In this video we're looking at joint variation and combined variation. Now joint variation occurs when one variable dir varies directly with several other variables or powers of other variables. Combined variation is where we combine the direct and inverse variation. So let's look at an example. Here it says if C varies jointly with the cube of Y and the square root of F. So that's saying that C varies with the cube of Y and C also varies with the square root of F. So we can combine that to be C equals KY cubed square root of F. Okay, next part is C equals 187.5. So I have 187.5 equals K times Y is 5. 5 cubed times square root of f is 9. So I have 187.5 equals k times 125 times 3. From here we can evaluate the 125 times 3 to be 375 k. So that means k equals divide both sides by that 375 and we get 187.5 divided by 375 is 0.5. So that means our formula is C equals 0.5 y cubed square root of f. Okay. Next, the resistance R in ohms of a conductor is directly proportional to its length L and inversely proportional to the cross-sectional area. So resistance is directly proportional to length and resistance is inversely proportional to the cross-sectional area. So we can combine that to be R equals KL over A. Let's find K. We have that the resistance of a wire 1.5 meters long with diameter 0.4 millimeters is 0.5 ohms. Now that 0.5 ohms has turned out quite small on there, so that's 0.5 ohms. Okay, so let's write out our information. We have L equals 1.4 meters. We have that resistance is 0.5 ohms. And our area we need to work out. So that's going to be pi times r squared which is going to be pi times now it says r is 0 0.4 millimeters but we need it to be in meters so that'll be 0 point 0.0004 over 2 squared because it's diameter. Okay. So that ends up as pi times 0 0.0002 or squared. So come back to my formula. I get R equals, sorry, R was 0.5. So 0 0.5 equals K times 1.4 all over pi times 0 0.0002 or squared. So rearranging, I have K is going to be the 0 0.5 times by everything down the bottom. I'm running out of room. All over 1.5. Don't ever submit your work this squished up. <laughs> Plug that in your calculator and get approximately 4.4 times 10 to the negative 8. So our formula, and I'll write it in red so it stands out, is R equals 4.4 times 10 to the negative 8 L all over A. So the key in this question is realising that your units need to match and knowing that because of this 0.4 millimetres we had to convert that in metres because that's what our L was. We need those and our area was supposed to be in metres squared. Okay, so remembering that the units matter. So the next part of the question is the resistance for a 3 metre long wire with diameter of 0.5 centimetres. So I don't know what R is. My L is 3 metres. My diameter is 0.5 centimetres, which is 
0.5 meters. Okay, so from there, my R is going to be 0.005 divided by 2, which is 0.0025 meters. So my resistance is going to become 4.4 times 10 to the negative 8 times by my L, which is 3, all over my pi times R squared. Plug that in your calculator and you get approximately 0 0.0069 ohms. And you could finish with a therefore statement. You should have noted because I have squished this up how hard it is to read information if you do squish your work up. So please remember setting that's important. Next, a variable can vary directly with one variable while varying inversely or jointly with other variables. So combined variation produces a single relationship using one constant of variation. And we've just seen that in our previous example. Okay, so we've just demonstrated what combined variation looks like. So let's look at another one. If C varies directly with the cube of Y, so C varies directly with the cube of Y, and inversely with the square root of f. Okay, so that means we can combine that to be c equals ky cubed all over the square root of f. It says that c is 187.5 when y is 5 and f is 9. From there I get 187.5 equals 125k all over 3. You would work down your page, of course, I'm coming up here. Multiply both sides by 3 and you get 187.5 times 3 gives me 562.5 equals 125k. Divide both sides by that 125 and you get k equals 4.5. So our formula is c equals 4.5 y cubed all over square root of f. So you can see that combined variation happening. Another one, in building a brick wall, the amount of time t taken to complete the wall varies directly with the number of bricks b. Okay, so t varies directly with B to be laid and inversely with the number of brick layers. So T varies inversely with the number of brick layers which is W. So combining that I have T equals KB all over W. Now it says the information of a wall of 1200 bricks so B equals 1200 takes 18 hours to complete with three brick layers. So W equals three. So from there I have 18 equals K times 1200 all over three times both sides by three. And I get 18 times three is 54 equals 1200 K. Divide both sides by that 1200 and you get 0 0.045. So that means T equals 0.045 B all over W. That's my relationship. From there, I move into the next part of the question. And it says, uh, how long would it take five bricklayers, so B equals five, to lay, sorry, five brick five bricklayers means that W equals five to lay 4,500 bricks. So you get T equals 0 0.045 times by 4,500 all over 5. So 0 0.045 times by 4,500 equals divided by 5 and you get 40.5. The question was in hours so therefore it would take 40.5 hours. Okay. Last example, the safe load for a horizontal beam supported at the ends varies jointly with the width. So L varies jointly with the width and the square of the depth. So L varies directly with the square of the depth of the beam and inversely with the distance S between the supports. 
So I have all that. So that will all combine to give L equals K W D squared all over S. From there, what information have they given me? Um, they're going to say, they're saying that what would happen to the safe load if the distance between the supports was halved and the width and depth of the beam was doubled. So if I make this L1 equals K W1 D1 all squared all over S1, so that means that my load distance between the supports was halved and my load distance was S, so that means S2 is now a half of S1 and the width and depth of the beam is doubled. So my width 2 is going to be 2 lots of my width 1 and my D2 is going to be 2 lots of D1. So plugging that in I end up with L2 equals K times 2W1 times 2D1 all squared all over my half S1. Simplifying that I get K times 2W1 times 4D1 all squared all over a half S1. Divided by a half means I can take that up and times by 2. So I end up with 2 times 4 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16, K W1 D1 all squared all over S1. Now when I compare it with what I started with with this, which is this over here, and you can see that that is 16 times L1. So safe load would be increased 16 times. So what now? Practice VRAP G1. It's the end of the module, so please remember to revise, read the summary, do the review exercise, do the sample text test before doing the um, final uh, module test day.